So, so um, at any time, please feel free to chime in with a question, either using the conversation box or um, by unmuting your microphone and jumping in. We welcome your questions. Um, if you're just joining us, it is 3 p.m. and um, uh, Dave, let's see here, Dave Hauser and I with the Ag Communications Department here on campus are going to be um, teaching you a little bit today about infographics 101 and along with that some design principles. So thank you and welcome. Um, we appreciate you being here. So let's see here. I'm going to start presenting my desktop. All right. Can everybody see our PowerPoint presentation? Is that, and we're still coming through loud and clear? Because <laughs> we can't see you all and or see what's going on at this point. So um, unless anybody chimes in and stops us, we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, yeah. welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dave Hauser. I am a graphic designer here in A Communication, if you haven't met me before. And, uh, and I'm Kelly Armbruster, and I'm an information specialist uh, with the Agriculture Communication Department as well. Um, and so we're excited to work as a team to present this together. So let's talk about infographics, shall we? So your first question is, I know we've got some people on the call today that um, probably have done infographics before or have some familiarity with that topic. We also have others that you might have, have never even heard the word before. So um, this is going to be a very basic introduction and uh, we hope that you can take some education and knowledge away from our uh, webinar today. So an infographic is a way to present complicated information or ideas in a way that is visually interesting and easy to understand. It uses fun graphics to draw readers in, keep them entertained. Infographics can tell a story with data that is compiled, sorted, and, sorted and arranged in a way that increases readers' knowledge about a subject. So um, I think the most important part of this definition is that a true infographic takes uses complicated information. So that's whether that's charts, data, um, and presents it in a way that makes it easy to understand. A lot of times, as you'll see throughout our presentation, um, we call something an infographic that might not be the true definition. It might not have truly complicated data or information in it, but at least provides a little bit of education and it, and it makes someone stop and take notice of, of the, the graphic that's, you know, however you're using it. So. Um, we're going to use the word infographic a lot throughout the day, um, though it might not be what we're going to show you might not be a true definition of, of what an infographic is. So a lot of times when you think about infographics, we're starting to see them more and more, but infographics have been around for a really long time, whether you truly noticed it or not. And so, um, you know, road signs uh, with symbols are a perfect example of a way to take a very basic piece of, of a basic visual and it instantly tells someone something without having to create a whole paragraph of information. So this is a very simple one and I thought was kind of a funny, interesting way to think of how infographics work. They instantly tell the reader something without ever having to explain it out or write it out. So some common types of infographics, um, ways that we can use them both in extension and agriculture work. Um, it could be to present a timeline. Um, maybe you um, in a newsletter want to show the progression of one of your programs. Um, creating a timeline might be a way to do that that makes it simple and easy to understand. Graphs, um, a visual narrative, something explaining a step-by-step -step process. Um, you know, whether that's even like a recipe could use a visual narrative to explain, you know, how to bake a cake could even become an infographic um, through a visual narrative process or even size comparisons. Um, we see all the time in some of our publications, um, anything from crops to soil particles, they use size comparisons to show um, for, you know, for producers to understand better. So. 
um, those are very simple ways and common types of ways to use infographics. Within, as you can see, I kind of created an infographic in and of itself to showcase common types of infographics. You easily could understand what each of those um, you know, four quadrants in this presentation are just through the visual. I didn't, I probably wouldn't have had to put the actual names of them and you would have known what I was talking about. So some common places that um, we can use infographics and extension and agriculture work. Um, social media is probably the most widely used the most place where infographics are being widely used at this time. Um, ourselves at, here at NDSU Extension, you'll see the two um, little infographics down in the bottom left-hand side of this PowerPoint presentation. These are ones that we've recently done in January and February to highlight some different topics. And so we um, included a visual with a quick tip, so it provided an instant piece of education about um, one is about using a slow cooker and one is about potato production in North Dakota and um, we linked back to a piece of education and I think that's really important um, in extension and agriculture work that um, our infographics you know whether they link back to a publication or a piece of education sometimes I don't think you can tell the full story within an infographic so it's neat to use an infographic to get someone's attention and then lead them back to um, more information. So through social media, um, you could place infographics in um, a newsletter, your presentations, handouts within a website. Um, of course, I think we're going to be seeing as infographics become a lot more popular, I think we're going to be seeing them in a lot more research publications that come out. And um, I don't know if Dina Kemet is with us today, but um, just recently you'll see that Dina, within one of her impact reports, used a graph to explain um, the impact that the Stepping On program had in Mercer County. So we, um, they're a great way to show information um, in an easy to use way. You'll see in the um, Your Money's Future infographic there in the middle of the page, that's one that Dave had put together for a publication, I believe. Is that right, Dave? No, it was, it was uh, for multiple uses. Oh, it, good. It was used as a poster and as a uh, as a social media type piece to give people more information about compounding interest. Yeah. So the one in the middle um, that Dave was just talking about is a true infographic in that um, it took that, some really complex data and numbers and hopefully presents it in a way that people can understand and um, make sense in a visual way. So um, those are some common places to use infographics. And now um, Dave's going to chime in. Here we go. And talk about some of the design principles. Now, you know, it's easy to want to go to a free program and begin designing, but um, there are some principles that you can use to make whether it's an infographic or any of the pieces that you put together that have a graphic component to them, um, you know, he's got some principles to help those look good and to make us look more credible in extension by having great yep. graphics. So I'll turn it over to Dave. And, and you can see already that the, uh, the two items that uh, I'm going to kind of focus on is, uh, is drawing people's attention to your products or your, your uh, pieces that you're working with. And also, uh, we want to give it a nice professional look, nice, clean, uh, something that people will have confidence in. Uh, they will build uh, a trust in, in that information that you are providing them. So I'm already using a couple little graphics, uh, eye-catching and professional look. Um, first step is uh, branding uh, your pieces that you're, that you're uh, putting together. Um, this example is uh, all sorts of different views of uh, the 4-H uh, extension and uh, experiment station logos. Um, also, your county uh, offices using your county logos when you're putting something together. Making sure you brand it so that people know where that information is coming from. And when we brand it with our with our logos, then people know that it's reputable. It's uh, it's backed by that land grant university. So we want to really make sure that they they're trusting our our uh, 
information that we're providing them. Um, this uh, this uh, particular slide is about uh, colors, and uh, and branding really involves uh, using the colors that uh, 4-H, for instance, the extension. Um, the actual colors that they uh, suggest that, that they have are the PMS colors. But when we're working with infographics and uh, uh, more visual type things in PowerPoint and uh, presentations, we're going to be using that hex code. And that's a uh, kind of a computer generated uh, number or code that represents the RGB uh, amount, red, green, and blue of those PMS colors. So uh, I'm providing this slide so that maybe you might want to jot some of those down, those hex codes, because uh, in the future when you are when you are working with some of the software that Kelly might be showing you, that those hex codes will help you brand your, uh, your pieces so that the color looks like it's supposed to look. Um, other than that, uh, we hope to have, uh, if those hex codes aren't out on our uh, branding page right now with our logos and stuff, we'll get those hex codes out on there too. Um, one of the first real design schemes I'm going to talk about is consistency. Um, consistency comes in many forms, uh, whether it's from one slide to the next slide in a presentation. Make sure you're using a consistent look and feel to it. Um, or if you're doing, uh, we've done publications where uh, there'd be like a series of publications. You want to keep those consistent looking so that people know that it's a series. Um, and uh, when it comes to infographics, um, one of the things we're doing consistently is uh, placing like our, uh, our branding is always going to be kind of something that's going to look similar from one, uh, one infographic to another that we put out. So I'll, let's tackle styles. Uh, the styles I'm talking about right now and today are uh, are mainly with like images, use similar image styles, and you can tell here that uh, that uh, the three on the left are in a certain style. The one on the right really stands out. It it doesn't look like it fits the narrative. Um, so, and your eye is drawn to that one more so than the other three because it looks different. So when you're placing graphics into a, uh, into a piece, make sure they're consistent so that the viewer's eye isn't drawn to just that particular image. Um, other than that, uh, let's move on to uh, fonts. Fonts are another way you want to keep consistent. Use one or two fonts in your uh, piece. Uh, you don't want to be running all over the place. I've used several different fonts on this slide to show you that multiple fonts just looks cluttered. It doesn't look as professional. Um, I also put on here uh, stuff that I think I should tell you about fonts as well. Um, all caps. One, it's someone yelling at you. Uh, two, it's hard to read if you're doing uh, even a long title using all caps is, is tough to read. Um, you want to make your message as easy as possible for uh, someone to uh, digest it. So the best way to do that is to keep your all caps to just maybe one word or two and, and it's used for drawing someone's attention to something. Um, and also just because you found a cool font, don't necessarily need to use it because it might be hard to read. Um, Readability is is very important because one you want someone to dig, get that information and digest it, maybe even hit the share button on their uh, on their social media so that they send it out to their friends. So you want it to be clear and concise of what you are uh, providing them. And my next uh, <laughs> my next one is contrast. Uh, too often. Uh, stuff can be lost, information can be lost when uh, when you don't have the right kind of contrast in, in it. Um, and we're not just talking about the color contrast. I I changed just by using color, I changed how this this image feels. Right away now you're you're drawn to it. 
But there's other things that you can do too, not just color and uh, for contrast. You can use contrast and size with elements that are on your page, uh, contrast with uh, like your, your paragraphs, uh, your uh, font sizes. If you really want to draw something, attention to something, you know, like you see like percentages, 57% of people like this, you know, they really pop that out. If that's what you really want someone to know, that's what you that's what you use to uh, to draw people's attention to. And then uh, we'll move on from contrast and go to white space. What is white space? It's the negative space uh, on an image or on a layout. Um, in this case, I've left just a little bit of white space so that you might see what white space truly is. Um, too often we we see uh, we see posters come in that need to be printed, and someone's going off to a, a a conference where they need to present a poster, and they've got every stitch of information they have on that particular particular topic, and it's in there so tight, it fit their parameters of what size they needed, but it's almost unreadable because it's too much information. So white space helps the user or the viewer be able to walk through the document. So I'm going to go on to this next slide, and this shows how to emphasize what I've done here is I've emphasized uh, your graphics to draw the attention so that someone actually looks at your piece and actually gives it the full attention that you want the people to do. And also what you're going to need to do to add white space is to cut your copy. Um, for instance, uh, the two examples that uh, Kelly showed earlier with the, uh, that we have put out just recently on our social media uh, sites. Uh, we cut the copy and we cut the copy and then even when it got to me and when I started laying those out I even cut the copy some more mm -hmm. and uh, so the information when you're using graphics and stuff to tell your story you can tell a lot with a particular graphic so just keep that in mind that white space even though that wow you think you could have put some text or information in this space it's also being used to help lead someone back up to here. Because as they come down through the uh, through your information, they get to that empty, empty space, but their eye wants to travel back up. So white space helps lead your viewer through your, your information too. Um, the next uh, principle is alignment. As you can see, uh, this is kind of an example of some of the stuff we might see come in to our offices where stuff is just kind of thrown in there just because, hey, I want that graphic, I want this bit of text, and and it looks nice because I got it to fit in here. But if we're going to really push uh, that uh, professionalism, that uh, that sign that, hey, this is this is good information, we're going to want to we're going to want to uh, do something where it cleans up that space. And in this instance, what I've done is I've I put in uh, three uh, guidelines on here just to show you how you might want to align something. Um, with everything on the left side, it really helps the viewer go down through the information. And what I did with the graphic is I've also, when I'm putting in graphics, I anchor it to something else. And alignment is the way you anchor something to whether it's text or another graphic on the page. You don't want them to be kind of off because then they don't, it just visually doesn't tie it together. Um, and I'm going to move on to uh, breathing room. Yeah, this one's a little overwhelming. Uh, this this goes with, the, uh, with that concept of uh, uh, white space. Um, too often people might design right to the edges when you need some breathing room. And that's breathing room between this edge of the uh, your edge of your uh, image, or the edge of the piece of paper, or even uh, the uh, paragraphs to paragraphs. You want consistent spacing, and you want some breathing room so that someone can easily move from one piece to the next in your uh, in your piece of information. I'll show you the 
this is what I did with this particular information. Once again, sometimes to get your breathing room, you're going to have to cut your copy, cut your information to the, whether it's making it just bullets, making it uh, simpler for the uh, viewer to digest. In this case, I did show you that we have absolutely no breathing room now on the left side of my word breathing room. But this is okay. Um, sometimes if you have just a little space between like uh, the text on a page and the edge of it, that's uncomfortable. It creates a, a uh, kind of like conflict there and your eye will visually go to that conflict. So to avoid that, either A, you get some space to the edge, you know, away from the edge, or in this case, I put breathing room right up next to the edge and it still works. Your eye leads through the breathing room. You can look at the graphic and it brings you to your, your information. So uh, I keep wanting to say any questions, but I don't, you, with a camera, you just don't see anybody going, hey, I, I don't understand that. But uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, one last thing that I'm gonna talk about is paragraph spacing. Um, some things that I've seen in uh, PowerPoint presentations, um, on some of the posters that we get in and out of our out of our uh, presentation graphics area, um, the spacing between headings and paragraphs can get kind of confusing. Of what does this heading uh, go with? In this in this case, the the content on the left side, I purposely made it so that. Uh, it was a little closer here than than in between the in, in between here, but this heading goes with this paragraph, and it makes the it makes it hard for the viewer to move through this content when the headings don't go with the copy. Um, in on the right side, I have done a better job of putting the headings with the content, and in this case, you can see if you just want to jump from one heading to the next heading to the next it's easier to do that here than it is to do it over here. You want to jump to this particular paragraph instead of the heading. And sometimes viewers, maybe that's all they're going to get out of your infographic is just the couple headings, and that might be enough for them to like it. It might be enough for them to share it, you know, without even digesting all the content in that infographic. So you want to make it as easy as possible for them to comprehend or, or to digest that information. Also, in this case, I I uh, put the paragraph spacing, that title, I made it closer to the top of the paper than to the content below it, just to show you that these two do not feel like they're together, but they should be. You want your, the title should be with your content. Sometimes uh, that spacing, just a little closer, would help that visual, uh, give the, the eyes to be able to visually read the title, and move on to the next piece. Um, so other than that, I, uh, I don't have anything else that I'm going to provide as far as, uh, as design uh, principles. But if you guys ever have something where you're doing something and you're putting it together and you ever have questions, you can always send something my way and I can give you a little quick consult over the email or something and go, hey, I like it. Uh, try thinking about alignment or contrast or something like that. So. At this point, I think I'll turn it over to Kelly again right. to help uh, move us into showing some of these software that, that uh, she uses to help her with sure. putting together. So now that we have kind of listened to some of Dave's design principles and tips, I'm going to show you a few sites. Let's see here. I'm going to show you a few sites. There's there's lots of different free sites that you could use um, to design an infographic or just a graphic in general. Um, so the ones we're going to talk about today are Easily, PictoChart, and Canva. And so we're going to start with Canva here. And I'm going to try to talk about some of the pros and cons of each of these. And um, like I said, at any time, please feel free to interject and ask any questions, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. So um, what's kind of neat about Canva, again, it's a free site. You do have to sign up using a email and password, but it um, 
for most of the things you can do, they offer free templates and, and lots of free things. There are options to upgrade. Um, some of their graphics and fonts and things of that nature might cost a, a dollar to use or maybe a little bit more. We'll, we'll get into that. But what's kind of neat about Canva and what I think one of the definite pros of using Canva is that when you go to create, um, let's see here, let me go, uh oh. Uh -oh. Um, when you go to create a design, they offer you templates. So you don't have to know truly the exact size of something. Um, they offer, you know, like a social media or Facebook um, type template and the size that goes along with that. Um, maybe you want to make a cover photo for your um, County 4-H Facebook page or something of that nature. They offer options to do that and you don't have to know the size. So let's just grab the social media one real quick. I also think one of the pros of Canva, in, in my opinion, I think they're all very easy to use, but in my opinion, Canva is the very easiest. Um, it has a really simple interface that I think most anyone could um, quickly kind of begin designing. So um, you'll see here in this uh, bottom right hand corner um, the graphics that are available for free and as you scroll through they're kind of intermixed. One of the cons is that you can't sort by free. So um, even if you go up in the search bar and put free in there it shows you images of freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things like the United States flag or a bald eagle. It doesn't actually bring up all the free um, layouts, it brings out up symbols of what they think constitutes freedom. So it's kind of, it's kind of funny, but um, and kind of one of the cons. So um, if we wanted to, one of the simplest things you could do is um, you simply drag and drop a layout into uh, whatever you you know, are wanting to design. In this case, we chose a, a social media graphic, and it's very simple to click and easily change colors. Um, one of the things that Dave talked to you about was using hex codes. So um, if I wanted to make happy, um, let's say I want to make it the color of 4-H green. So I know that the hex code for 4-H green is 339966. Uh, and knowing that, um, I can instantly make Happy Mother's Day the, the color of 4-H green. So um, it's easy to move things around. It almost feels like PowerPoint. Um, if you use PowerPoint quite a bit, you know, kind of the same concept of moving things around, changing things. Um, let's see here. Some of the elements in Canva are also that you can create charts and graphs. They do have free options for that. So um, again, it's a simple drag and pull in and um, change colors. Um, anything, if I wanted to move this to the back, um, I can do all kinds of fun things. So it's very simple to use. Um, neat backgrounds, like I said, many of them are free as you can see here but also then you get into the ones that are, are $1 to use. What's also neat about Canva, and it's also the same in PictoChart and in Easily, is that um, you can upload something. So let's say, um, you know, I wanted to put the 4-H logo in here. Well, we're going to do that in Easily, <laughs> is where I had already created some uploads. So, But you can upload your own graphics into, let's say you wanted to put your county extension logo into a piece, you can upload it into a Canva um, site. So that's a little bit about Canva. It's a neat uh, program that I've used for multiple things. Like I said, um, here's one of the um, quick little graphic that I created. This went along with a um, post I did about using photos on social media platforms. So I was able to find these three icons for free um, there in Canva just to illustrate um, 
you know, ways to take photos. And so that was just a quick little graphic I created to go along with a blog post about using photos um, with articles. So there's Canva. Um, let's go into PictoChart. Now PictoChart is one that I'm not as familiar with, but it seems very similar to both Canva and Easily in that it's um, very simple to use. One thing that's really neat about PictoChart, and, and a lot of people say that PictoChart is the foremost true infographic creating software. And the reason for that, I'm going to show you that real quick. is that within PictoChart, um, they have a tool section that um, you can create, um, you can create an infographic that is almost, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> um, well, I'll, it's almost, um, it's, one is that like interactive? Yes, interactive. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, exactly. I just blinked out. Um, interactive, so that um, you know, let's say you wanted to create a uh, horizontal chart. Um, at any time, you can change the colors of this. Um, you can change these. Let's say you wanted to showcase 4-H um, enrollment in your county over a five-year period. You know, at any time, you can change this. And then, once that chart is in your graphic, when someone moves their mouse over it, it shows the values that are in that um, graphic. So, um, let's try a different, there's a couple that are kind of neat. So, and I'm going to change the value of apples to just, we'll do... 50 arbitrarily. I'm going to update that. And so what you would see is that this one actually even moves. So what's neat about PictoChart is that, like I said, it's interactive. And um, when, you're, when your mouse is off of it, you know, it doesn't show any values. But as you mouse over each part of it, it um, shows your values. And so I think PictoChart is really neat for creating some, like I said, interactive graphics. Um, again, Pick to Chart is also free if you uh, create an account, and you can do that through social media or using an email address and password. Um, so let's move on to Easily. We're getting and um, Easily is the program that I've used the most. Um, in fact, I attended a um, training session on it here at NDSU put on by the IT department. Um, they trained um, anyone who wanted to attend on um, easily was the program that the training was over. So it's what I've had the most um, familiarity with. Um, let's And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through really quick how I um, could create a, a visual um, very simply in easily. So I'm going to start fresh here. And they give you, um, there are templates to choose from. I'll go back real quick. So you could choose a template, a free template to start with. That if you need some ideas, here's one with a diagram. You know, if you wanted to click on this and simply enter your text into this um, template, you can do so. But today I'm going to start fresh here. And they give you some things to choose from. You could go through and simply select those and delete them out. But I'm going to clear the canvas just to go ahead and completely get rid of everything. What's different and easily than in Canva is that you can move your canvas around all on your own. So you kind of have to know what... Um, what size you kind of want to be creating and it's simple as googling if you want to know what the size of a Facebook cover photo is I, I'm sure you can google it and it will give you the exact um, pixels that should be and you can adjust your easily um, canvas to that size so I'm just gonna pick kind of an arbitrary size today 
And one of the first things I generally do in Easily is I go find backgrounds. And so they offer um, multiple free options. You can go pr pay to go pro and get more, but they generally have, you know, a nice selection of what I'm needing. So I simply select one that I want and I drag it into that area. Looks like it didn't keep the exact size I wanted, so I'm going to resize that real quick. So I simply kind of put that um, kind of a khaki looking background on it. And let's say I want to create a quick little graphic to go um, to showcase um, maybe a statement about 4-H. Well, I want to use the 4-H logo. So let's say I have that saved on my computer. I can simply use this upload button right here to upload um, a file that I might have saved. So you're going to get to see the process of finding that. And I've saved the 4-H logo out here. Let's say I want to put that. Well, it puts it in really big, so I can essentially use my mouse to there we go <laughs> slide that down a little bit oh. the one thing about Canva that I don't enjoy is that it doesn't um, keep things very well how about the control maybe control would do that ah Okay, thank you, Dave. Oh, <laughs> by, <no. Take> by, <laughs> by holding down the control button as I drag, it keeps this within proportion. Good to know. So, I don't know if that's... Sorry, Brad Cogdill. Don't do <laughs> I might be messing with the 4-H <laughs> logo. You didn't see that. Just um, <laughs> so, now I've got the 4-H logo in here, and let's say I want to uh, create some text there beside that. So, I'm going to click on the text button and it gives me some options for either a title, a header, or a body. It doesn't really matter, but um, I'm going to use header. And so, let's say I want to um, put some text along with that. Let's say, um, how about this? 4 inch members are and I'm going to put two times likely to community leaders. Now I've got some text in here, and now I want to I want to make it stand out and look neat. So I can drag that, and it can instantly. Um, get bigger for me, or I can use the size right here, and I want, whoa, holy cow, let's go with that, let's say I want to make that centered, maybe I want to set um, this off a little bit. Um, I could go in and pick a different font. Let's say impact. Well, it, I guess it's it did it to everything. Today. Darn it. Well, let's see here. Anyway, um, so let's say I want this um, font to also be that 4-H green. Again, I can go into my color selection, and within this box, I can put the 4-H hex code color. Hit apply. Uh, <laughs> this worked earlier today. <laughs> uh, 9966. Oh. 339966. There we go. Hey. Hey, 4-H green. All right. <laughs> so, right there we've got a quick little graphic that, um, you know, can use for whatever we need within a newsletter or social media. Now, let's say I, I can um, then at any time... Um, I can download that, both either a high quality version for print or a low quality version, which would probably be appropriate for the web, um, or a PDF as well. So um, 
I can do that, and it gives me the option to download and save that, hopefully. So it gives it to me down here. So anyway, um, so that's a quick little way to create a graphic that um, I can use e anywhere. Um, like I said, I think easily is my favorite so far for um, creating those really quickly. So, easily picked a chart and um, Canva. I'll get those to you right there if you'd like to write them down, or we also will have this presentation recorded if you'd like to go back and look at it later. So we're at the 40 minute mark. Um, do you all have any questions or um, comments? We would love to love to entertain those. We welcome your feedback. If you, after this webinar, if you'd like to email us or give us a call, both Dave and I are, um, you know, more than willing, more than willing to chat with you. So, yeah. Or send it to Adcom. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, Brad. Has uh, let's, uh, for all of those that are on, has anyone is there anyone else that is using a different infograph program that they really love that they'd like to tell the group about? curious how the staff who are online think they might use infographics. What different places might they see a use for infographic? You obviously said social media. What other ways? Brainstorming together maybe. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, as you saw the um, little graphic that I had created in Canva about how using photos, um, you know, 94% more people notice a, a written article if there's a photo with it. And I really think that, I'm not sure of the exact correlation, but I really think that applies to any type of graphics and that um, I think audiences are moving away from wanting to read a full page of text about something and they're wanting education in a way that's quick and easily digestible and I can really see that um, you know using some form of a graphic in, in almost anything we do certainly could get us um, more views and definitely more engagement whether that's like I said through publications or even in a handout you provide at a meeting um, through in your PowerPoints any of those things I think are great ways to um, use graphics to really uh, tell extension story and, and tell the story of what you're, you know, the education that you're providing. All right. Well, any other, any other questions, comments, <laughs> feelings, concerns? Otherwise, it's supposed to be. typing. Here we go. Impact reports, definitely. As you saw earlier in our presentation, um, you know, Dina Kemet is already using um, some graphs to show um, impact in Mercer County, and um, that's a great way to um, help people digest some of that information. So, got a few more. Looks like um, some conversation coming in. Becky, can you share with where this will be available um, after the recording is over with? Yes, we do the Ag Communication homepage in blog format, so it'll be the top story as soon as we get it uploaded there at ag.ndsu.edu slash agcom, two M, so right on our homepage. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I knew that Sonia had done a really great infographic, um, a web analytics graphic in PictoChart, so feel free to go take a look at that. Um, yeah, as you hover over the graph bars, you get kind of the feel of why it's, it's interactive. <laughs> it's 
So the interactivity wouldn't hold if you posted in Facebook or Twitter, would it, or does it? Hmm. Hi, this is Sonia. Uh, the way I have it saved in Pictochart, I have it saved actually on this website. So um, if you were to post this on Facebook, you would probably click on the link, and then you'd be brought to this uh, magic.pictochart.com. So in that case, it would be interactive. But you would have to go there in a way. You'd have to click on it. It would be interactive on the web, not right in Facebook. Correct. Not as a static image. Okay. Awesome idea for web pages, though. Hint, hint, everybody. <laughs> Very much so. That's worse. Um, yes, I believe so. Um, I, I, I know in easily you can download as a PDF. Now it might take a little finagling to turn that PDF into a JPEG. It depends on what, what file types can go into, it, yeah. can you, you can put into a Word document, but there's a lot of can, there's even free conversion programs online, so um, you can. Um, I'm a little nervous about the copied and pasted into a Word document. Um, I think you, when you download this file, you know, when you hit the download after you're done, then it's on your computer. Then you would insert it into a Word document or uh, mm -hmm. or PowerPoint or whatever. Um, copying and pasting might not actually put it in there type of thing. You might lose quality if you're using it somewhere other than the computer you have it on. Like I easily it does give you the option, like I said, either a low quality or high quality JPEG or as a PDF. So it does give you two file type options from there that I think should go into a um, a Word document just fine. Yeah. Save and insert is different than copy and paste. <laughs> yep. Save and insert would be much qu higher quality. I hope that um, yep. answered your question, Susan. All righty. Any other questions? Conversation? If not, we thank you so much for joining us. Please be looking in the next Let's Communicate at the beginning of April for our next um, AgCom webinar. They are the third Wednesday, second Wednesday, second Wednesday, I think, of every month um, at 3 p.m. Third. 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 Ah, okay. third Wednesday of every month, but please be looking for that in Let's Communicate. Um, and if you have an idea for a topic that you'd like to know about, we welcome your feedback on that as well. If there's something you're curious about that Ag AgCom can help you with, um, we look forward to developing a webinar series that is useful for you all. So, Thank you. All righty. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, and please feel free to go back and check out this recording at any time on our AgCom uh, website. Pa website page. So thank you all. <laughs>